Today's ruling by the German Constitutional Court approving the European Stability Mechanism is a better result than expected when you look at the conditions that have come with it. Not only that, but shortly after the ruling, the euro hit a four-month high against the dollar, with stock markets also jumping into positive territory. Good news, you might think. Well, yes, but it doesn't mean the eurozone crisis is over. Far from it, in fact. But it does mark another small step as far as solidarity in the EU is concerned. Well, with me on the line is Marie Owens-Thompson, a senior economist from Credit Agricole. Marie, uh, what does this now mean for Europe? I mean, we know this hasn't solved the euro crisis in one fell swoop, but I imagine the likes of Greece and Spain can take comfort now. They know that rescue funds are back on the table. Yes, I think uh, this was really uh, very much the anticipated outcome. But, of course, there was a theoretical risk that they could say no, although in the past the court has never been known to obstruct the German government's uh, policies. But, uh, of course, since we are in a stress environment, this, uh, this hurdle needed to be, be passed for everybody to draw a big sigh of relief. And, as you say, now they can get on with the business it's definitely another, uh, amongst many actually now, yeah, sign that Europe is totally determined to save uh, the monetary union and continue with um, the progress towards closer integration. And uh, the fact that Germany still has a constitutional court that has to look at these issues and that some decisions in this context are going to be subjected to parliamentary approval is, after all, a sign of a healthy democratic process in that country. And that will continue to be so until sovereignty is uh, given to a potential future EU finance minister. Okay, let's take a look at some of the conditions that came with the ruling. Um, emergency funds to member states above the sum of 190 billion euros can only be granted if the German parliament approve of it and that both houses of the parliament must be kept informed on ESM fund deployment. These conditions are pretty light given the circumstances, aren't they, Marie? Yes, and it comes back to what I was just saying, actually, that, you know, uh, of course, the markets could fret that there's only, so to speak, 190 billion that are not subject to any further uh, legal uh, processes. Yeah, but uh, but again, if we have to go above 190 billion and put that proposal to the German Parliament, then we have in opposition a German Parliament which is extremely EU friendly and very unlikely to vote against any such motions. Now, another important issue here is bond purchasing. There's been a complaint submitted looking at whether the unlimited quantities of sovereign debt the ECB can buy, that was announced last week, might violate German sovereignty. The court could continue for some time deciding on this, couldn't they? Yeah, again, I think it's, of course, upsetting, so to speak, yeah, to the market who, that, that there is a democratic process. Yeah? On, on some level, the markets would like to get rid of that and remove all uncertainty and just sort of impose a monetary union or whatever so that they could have a clear answer and don't have to live with this uncertainty. But unfortunately, that is utopia. And we all know with reason, of course, that we need a democratic process. And therefore, the markets will just have to live with this uncertainty for a while longer. Now, uh, the, the risk that this poses, you know, this c continued democratic process in Germany, is, uh, is actually very small, because e even the decisions that then are subjected to parliamentary approval are very likely to be approved, because the political opposition in Germany is, uh, is even more EU-friendly, you could argue, than, uh, than certainly the coalition, perhaps not the more than uh, Angela Merkel, but, uh, but certainly more EU-friendly than her coalition partner. So uh, uh, I, think, uh, I think Germany, in spite of the rhetoric, is really showing with the decision today and all its other actions that it is going to do everything that it can and in its power to make sure that uh, the euro survives and, and that Europe moves continues to move ahead towards closer integration. Finally, we saw a boost to the euro shortly after the ruling, hitting a four-month high. Will this continue? I think that there are very several important factors in favour of the euro at the moment, and, uh, and it's also the fact that it can strengthen is in this environment is a sign that the whole 
stress element in the markets is slowly abating thanks to the steps that have been taken and that are still being taken in favor of the monetary union's survival. Now, I, I think that the forthcoming banking union is an extremely important step in this process and one uh, arguably even more important than what happened today. We really need to see progress towards banking union, I think, to be able to continue to reduce risk aversion in the markets and to allow the euro to strengthen further. Now, this process is uh, very positive and I'm fundamentally convinced that in the long run uh, this is what's going to happen but uh, in the short run of course nothing will protect us from volatility. Okay thanks for that analysis Marie that's all we've got time for right now but I'll be back tomorrow with an interview on the US FOMC and we'll be looking at trading methods as well but until then goodbye. <laughs>